Nothing in this recording is intended as investment advice, and the people in this recording may hold positions in the companies they talk about. Do not make any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. Hello and welcome to Zach's Traders Cafe. Today I'm joined by Cedric Simone, who's CEO of Altona. How are you today, Cedric? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Zach. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, we haven't spoken for some time, so it's good to have a catch up. Uh, today's news the Zambia Copper License Acquisition. Maybe you can tell us about that. All right. Uh, so, um, as you know, our company is called uh, Altona Rare Earths. So you, you might wonder why we are acquiring a, a copper license. Um, a few a few weeks ago, we announced uh, our intention to expand and to diversify the portfolio of uh, assets of Altona. Uh, as you know, our flagship project is and remains the Monte Moambe Rare Earth project uh, uh, located in uh, northwestern uh, Mozambique, uh, on which we are currently doing pre-feasibility study activities, uh, uh, focusing mostly on the, um, on the metallurgy, which is always a very important uh, angle of uh, rare earth projects. And uh, so we, we, we decided we wanted to diversify our portfolio to add uh, uh, some exposure for the company to other commodities. And we identified uh, copper, lithium, and nickel as uh, potentially interesting. And um, an another thing we did is that we, we, we are not trying to fill a basket uh, with many projects. Uh, we are trying to be very, very selective. Uh, for several months, we've been looking at uh, very specific projects. Uh, um, and we, we, we just want to, to add, uh, to complement Monte Monde, a few uh, high quality projects. And, and the Cabompo South project in Zambia is one of them. This is our first uh, acquisition in this uh, expanded strategy. So this license is a little bit over 600 uh, square kilometer in surface, and it's located in the Northwestern province of uh, Zambia. It's a license which used to belong to Freeport, uh, some a while ago, and uh, at the time, uh, uh, around 2020, Freeport decided to move out of exploration worldwide. So they dropped all their exploration assets, including the ones in Zambia, not because there was any uh, any issue with the assets, but just because it was a corporate strategy decision. So this asset uh, has already seen a, a little bit of uh, exploration, grassroots exploration. Uh, there has been geological mapping, there has been a, a ground magnetometer survey uh, on most of the surface area of the license. And there has been also some first pass um, ionic leach soil sampling. And both this geochemistry work and uh, the, the geophysics have shown a very interesting anomaly, which is located in the northwestern, northeastern part of the license. Uh, and uh, in terms of geoch geochemistry, we are talking about copper, uh, gold, and silver. Uh, so it's a very, very interesting grassroots project, uh, which requires uh, some follow-up. Uh, the, first, the first phase of exploration that needs to be done is quite simple. We just need to reprocess the magnetometer, the magnetometer survey data, and we need to do infill uh, geochemical sampling. So we are not talking about very expensive uh, uh, exploration and this exploration will allow us to define uh, drilling targets. So the, the tenement was previously held by uh, Freeport uh, McMoran, obviously a giant in the space. Um, is that something which maybe gives an indication of how good the asset could be and how it could uh, you know, help uh, the Altona story? Yeah, it's, it's, always, it's always good when you, when you pick an asset which has been held uh, by a major. Uh, but uh, personally, as you know, I'm a geologist, uh, so I'm also relying uh, very strongly on the actual data uh, which I have seen, which are very, very encouraging, and which we really justify to, to this acquisition. Right, and just and finally, I mean, uh, you're you're uh, clearly still very much focused on rare earths. How has the market been in the rare earth space? Because obviously, even though we've seen lithium go down, etc., uh, is has rare earth been affected by that, or how, how is that going? Yeah, um, one of the, I would say, sad uh, things when you are uh, a junior exploration company 
is that uh, your share price is also exposed to the price of the actual commodities. And that has been the case for most uh, rare earth companies. Uh, since uh, 2022, uh, the price of rare earths has been going down and uh, uh, that has affected uh, uh, the share price of rare earth exploration company and the ability to finance projects. So it's, it's sad, but this is the way it is. It doesn't make a lot of sense because a project like Monte Mwambe is still many years away from production. And so it should not be so much affected by the, the current price of commodities, which is very short term. And we believe very, very strongly on the long term outlook uh, for rare earths because of the green energy transition. So um, Monte Mwambe uh, is currently at uh, a pre feasibility stage. Uh, we have received a lot of inquiries from uh, Western governments about this project. Uh, they would like to support it. But what we think, what, what we see is that uh, this support comes mostly at the DFS uh, stage or BFS stage, definitive feasibility study, bankable feasibility study, not at the pre feasibility stage. So um, as we as we advance with the project, uh, uh, we will have to, fi to find funding uh, for the PFS. And we don't want to do this on the stock markets. Uh, at the moment, it will be difficult. So we are trying to be creative about this. And we are looking for actively for strategic investors who could invest in uh, Monte Mwambe. And we already have seen interest. We, are, we have some uh, discussions that are ongoing with strategic investors. So that means that the funding of Monte Mwambe could be kept separate of the rest of the activities of Altona. And uh, for us, that would be very good. This is what we are aiming at. Cedric Simone, CEO of Altona, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Zach.